I want to take you back to a moment in my life. It was about one year ago, and I was sitting on my couch in my home, and it was just a normal day. But suddenly I got a really special feeling, a strange feeling. And I was so amazed, I really felt good, and I put a smile upon my face, and I thought, wow, what is this? So I grabbed my laptop, searched all over the internet to see if I could find anything about it. And after a few hours of searching, I finally got the answer. It appeared to be happiness. And maybe you are already familiar with happiness, but that day I experienced it. And I wanted to talk with you today about happiness. Truth be told, there were exactly 5,462 people who spoke already about happiness at that, but there's still a small part which hasn't been discussed. And that's what I would like to share with you today. Nowadays, we've got two kinds of people on this planet. First, we've got a group of people that's aware of happiness. And on the other hand, we've got a, people, a group of people that's not aware of happiness. And I want to do a small test with you, and this may sound silly, but please join me. Can you raise your hand if you are aware of the fact that happiness exists? Great. So we're all in the first group, except for one guy over there, but that's okay. <laughs> the truth is, I'm not so pretty sure anymore that I'm, not, I'm glad that happiness exists. Because from the moment that I became aware that the best feeling I can get is happiness, it made me also a little bit insecure. That I always and always need to strive to become happy. Maybe this will sound familiar to you. But unfortunately, I can't go back. I know that happiness exists. And not so long ago, I was in a gift shop. I needed a gift, and almost the only thing I could buy were all kind of inspirational quotes for on your wall. In the old days, we had a beautiful Van Gogh or a Chagall on our wall, but we replaced them by all kind of happy life quotes, like, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. It scared me, because it would mean that 95% of my time, I'm not alive. <laughs> but there was another one, and it really freaked me out. And it goes like this. Become the best version of yourself. <coughs> Ever heard of it? And I just told you that I was striving to become happy. And suddenly I read that I need to become the best version of myself. And this suggests, when I'm not the best version of myself, I'm not good enough. So I started to think about this quote. And you know, it's good to grow, but it's wrong to think that you will become happy when you're the best version of yourself. That's not the way it works. It works the opposite way. Happiness is the key to become a better version of yourself. But most important, be a happy person anyway. And that's what I would like to share with you today. How to become happy not being the best version of yourself. So let's go date back to that happy day of mine. I experienced happiness and I thought, wow, this is great. I want to have this tomorrow again. Yeah, why not? So it was the next day, same house, same couch, and I was totally ready. I prepared myself, my hair was in a good shape, and I sat down on the couch, waiting for the great feeling to join me. And I waited, and waited, and waited. And the feeling didn't come. And I thought, oh, this is strange. Why was it here yesterday, and why not now? And I waited for hours, but the feeling didn't come. We just found out that we're all in the first group. We are aware of the fact that happiness exists. And if you'd ask somebody from this group, what they want to become, there's a big chance that you say, well, I want to become happy. It's the highest goal. But if I ask you to describe happiness, could you give me a proper description? Think about it for a second. Description of happiness. It's pretty hard, right? And there's a reason for it. Happiness is a feeling, and we can't describe feelings. And there's something more, and it's even more important. We don't have a direct influence on our feelings. I just showed you, I was totally ready to experience happiness on the couch, but it didn't come. And that's strange, because we want to achieve something, we want to become happy, but then you need to have some influence. You don't want to wait all day for somebody to show up, do something great for you, so you can say, oh wow, you just made my day, can you come back tomorrow? That's not the way it works, you have to do it yourself, you need to have some influence. In the period that I experienced happiness, I also had a problem. Something strange happened to me on those days. On regular moments, I suddenly felt that I needed to cry. Just at random moments. And the strange thing about it was that I was not unhappy at those moments. I was not sad, but still I felt that I needed to cry. For example, I was in the middle of a meeting, and everybody was telling the story about the week before, and suddenly I felt some tears burning. And you know what? It's a pretty strange thing to start crying in the middle of a meeting. 
So I tried to shape my face in such a way that the tears wouldn't appear, and luckily I succeed every time. So I'm really good at mad faces now. But I knew there was something wrong. So I visited a friend of mine who's a psychologist. And these moments had to do something with my subconscious. And pretty soon we discovered that I was not happy with myself when I was doing nothing. When I was doing nothing, I felt worthless. I was really hard for myself. I always had to be busy achieving something. And this is completely wrong. You need to be happy with yourself at any time, at any moment, when you're busy doing great things, but also when you're doing nothing. So I confronted myself with my strive for happiness. And my body gave me a signal that this wasn't the correct way. The quote from the gift shop, become the best version of yourself, literally applied to me on those days. When I was not the best version of myself, I was not happy. So I found out that my focus was wrong. I was focusing on happiness as a goal. But I just told you, you don't have a direct influence on your feelings. So I was focusing on something I couldn't achieve. So I needed a different focus. So what should your focus be? The answer is in this model. All day long, things are happening. And these happenings, these stimulus, gives us a certain feeling. And the feeling that we got shapes our behavior. And of course, with our behavior, we make new things happen. Seems clear. But there's something missing in this model. There's another spot. That's really important. When there's something happening, before you have a feeling, you first have a thought about the thing that just happened. When there's something happening, we first have a thought about the thing that just happened, and our thought creates the feeling that we have. So there's no immediate fe feeling after happening. And I can make this clear with an example. When you hear this, what is happening? I see a few people laughing, a few people are crying. <laughs> because they think, well, not again. You're at the train station and your train has a delay. And that's the happening, the message that you get. The train has a delay. Is there an immediate feeling when you get this message? No, some people get really angry, some people get really sad. There's no immediate feeling. An automatic feeling. Our brain processes the happening, the message that your train has a delay. And in the brain, we create a thought about the thing that just happened. And the thought that we had, that creates our feeling. So once again, you don't have a direct influence on your feelings, but you do have an influence on your thoughts. And once you can create, uh, control your thoughts, you can create a mindset. So your thoughts and mindset are a really important key to become happy. But where should you focus on? What should your mindset be if you want to become happy? The answer is this. Be positive. If you have a positive mindset and have positive thoughts about the thing that just happened, that's the easiest and fastest way to get a happy feeling. And the good thing about a happy feeling is that your behavior becomes better, more productive, less stressed. And when your behavior becomes better, you'll see that the, 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 the new uh, events, the new happenings you will have also will be better. So focus on your positive mindset. That's the key. And to make this practical, I want to share three things with you. Three, thing, three things you can do during your day. Three positive mindset activities. And we have a long day, so you can forget the rest. What I just told, please remember this part. This is the important thing. The first one is really nice. It's a gift from me to you today. And from now on, starting tomorrow, you get my permission when you wake up, to stay in bed for one minute longer. That's awesome, right? But you have to do something in this minute. In this minute, you're going to visualize your day. Visualize your day and name three things why it's going to be a great day. Three things you look forward to. And this may sound really hard, but when you do it, you see it's really simple. Every day you've got wonderful, wonderful, nice activities. And the visualizing is good for two reasons. First, you have a better overview of your day. You know what kind of day it's going to be. So you're more in control, less stressed. But on the other hand, secondly, and that's even more important, you're going to see your daily activities in a different way. And some days it's really easy. You are going to a big concert. But other days it can be having lunch or dinner with a friend or just quality time with your partner or with your kids. It can be anything. But the thing is, you have these activities every day. 
But when you make these activities, the reason that your day is going to be a great one, you're going to feel different. You're going to feel more positive before, during, and after these activities. So please, from now on, use your one minute in bed and visualize three things why your day is going to be great. For the second one, I need you to do something. I want you to imagine something. Please think about a moment within the last four weeks when you did something nice for somebody else. It can be anything. A compliment, a gift, a surprise, maybe anything. Please think about a moment. The only condition is that you just did it because it felt good. There was no need for it. You just did it because it felt good. Please think about a moment. Yes, you succeed all? Okay, now I'm curious if you all find something. Uh, let me check. She's really busy. Mm, did you find something? Yeah, will you come to the stage with me? microphone for you. Would you like to share your moment with us? Thank you. Um, I complimented a colleague of mine who helped me. Oh, great. That's great. That's really nice. We like that, right? Yeah. That's a good thing to do. Okay, great. Yeah, give her an applause. Really nice. Okay, thank you. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, you can go backstage, you get a headphone, put yeah. some nice music on, and I will pick you up in a minute. Okay. Yes? You can take the microphone with you. Yes, I think she's got the music on. Good. Okay. It was a really nice thing she did, compliment a colleague without any need. That's really nice. We should do that more often. But the applause you just gave was a little bit bad. This is, the, <laughs> this is the thing what we're going to do. When she comes back and enters the stage, we're going to give her a new applause. But not a, big, not a normal applause, not even a big applause. When she comes back, we're going to give her the biggest applause you ever gave. <laughs> so when she enters the stage, don't hesitate. Everybody stands up, <laughs> screams, yells, make as lost noise as you can just to give her a great time. Put away your pen and paper. And we got only one shot, so we got to do this really good. Give your best. Yeah, so when she comes up, just yell, scream, stand up, give her the biggest applause you ever gave. Okay? I'm going to pick her up. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you. How was that? <laughs> that was good. That was good. She said it was good. Okay, great. You feel better? <laughs> all right, yeah, it's, it's awkward. It's awkward. <laughs> but I see you're also smiling, so that's a good thing. Okay, thank you. You can go back to your seat. Okay, great. It may not be surprising that she felt really good after this big explosion you just gave her. But the interesting thing about this is, that she wasn't the only person who felt good after the big explosion. I bet you all feel better, more positive. And that's the second thing we should do during our day. This was the visualizing. Here we have spread positivity. Share it with other people. Share the good feeling with other people. We just experienced it. When you do this, other people will feel great. But you will also help yourself with a great positive feeling. So focus on spreading positivity. For example, a research show, when you greet five strangers a day, you're already far more happier. Five strangers a day, that's nothing. So please use your focus and spread your positivity. And it's interesting, because when you play hard, 
you will feel positive. When we are positive, our brains work better, so we'll become more productive when we work hard. Remember that part. And then the last thing, what we do at the end of our day. How do you end your day? For a long time, for me, it went like this. I was lying in my bed, with my smartphone stuck in my hand, and I was checking Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, my emails, my WhatsApp, the news, of course, and then Facebook again for some new posts, <laughs> Twitter for new tweets, maybe I was even retweeted, that would be awesome. And finally checking the news again, to see if nothing terrible happened in the meantime. I was totally not with myself before I went to sleep. I was at different places. I you know it's okay to check your smartphone before you go to bed, but don't make it the last thing you're doing. Take a digital detox. Take some moment for yourself and think about your day. Be grateful. Another research showed that people who are grateful are the happiest person on this planet. And a friend of mine and I did some research on this topic. We asked a group of students to write down for 21 days in a row, at the end of the day, three things they were grateful for. And after these 21 days, we measured that happiness had increased for these people. And again, you'll see that every day has got wonderful, nice activities. But when you can be grateful about these activities, and they will come again, you're going to feel different, you're going to feel better when they will show up again. So please, be grateful. Again, name three things at the end of your day where you're grateful for. So, visualize your day. Name three things why it's going to be great. Secondly, spread positivity. We just experienced it. It was a great moment. Please do this more often. You'll help other people with a great feeling, but you'll also help yourself with a great feeling. And at the end of your day, be grateful. Name three things where you can be grateful for. And you see this, when you add, add these three things to your daily activities, you'll see that you focus on a positive mindset. And then you might even become happy without having to be the best version of yourself. Thank you.